Good evening. Welcome to Children First. I'm Sister Catherine Ryan. I'm privileged to serve as the Executive Director of Maryville Academy. And this evening, we're going to focus our show on education for children. And I'm delighted that we have Dr. Craig Mackey, who's the Director of Educational Services at Maryville Academy, who's going to speak about our Therapeutic Day School, but also about some educational principles for children in general. So welcome, Craig. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, Craig, I, I think the first thing our viewers should know is how we were fortunate enough to have you come to Maryville Academy to work with our children. I started at Maryville Academy in 1998. I did my senior semester uh, internship for my bachelor's degree with uh, Maryville at the Columbus uh, Emergency Reception Shelter and never went back home. I uh, met my wife a couple weeks into work. and worked with Maryville in a number of different capacities from 98 to 2003. Um, finished a degree and worked as a school social worker in District 214 and then came back to Maryville and you gave me the opportunity to start the Gen School. So let's tell the viewers what your master's degree is in and then what your doctorate is in. I have a master's degree in uh, school social work and a doctorate in educational leadership and administration. And so we were pleased to have Craig complete his doctorate at, a, at the very moment that we were searching for a good educational alternative for some of our young men uh, at Maryville. We have uh, young men at some campuses and young ladies at other campuses. Craig is at our Des Plaines campus and Craig founded, initiated, created for us the Gen School. Craig, what does Gen School mean? The Gen School is uh, a non-public special ed school or therapeutic day school, like you said. The name itself, Gen, is, n is not a person. It is the highest virtue within uh, Confucius teaching, which I'm going to whittle down hundreds of years of philosophy into. Um, it essentially means respectful reciprocity, that we all have something to give, that we all can learn from one another and that if we share the respect with one another the group or the community as a whole um, grows uh, in, in our learning then then becomes much larger and so that there was a driving principle in what we wanted to set our school up as and how we wanted to do things differently than otherwise would be done in a, in a more traditional therapeutic setting and for, for certain in, in your regular ed uh, buildings. Now, Craig, many of our children who come to the school have not been in school for a while uh, or have been in school and felt like failures or have been in school and just couldn't grasp the subjects that were being presented. And then they come to Gen School. And how do you welcome them and what do you do differently? Uh, I think the most important thing, what we do differently is a philosophy that is much different than, than a traditional environment of we're more focused on the thinking and learning process than we are the product the test score that that doesn't mean much to me just because most of our come kids come in uh, and there's gaps we don't need to beat them over the head with tests to figure out that there's gaps and so we begin looking at where and what can we help fill in to get them thinking and learning um, better uh, and so the the, what the Gen School is now is really a culmination of me being fortunate enough to walk into a situation where I was given the opportunity to do something very different um, and from day one set out and say we're going to do it different. We're not going to do more of the same. We're not going to just continue doing the same stuff these kids have failed at, put more teachers, put more people in the rooms. It's not the number of people in the rooms. It's how we're trying to teach them. Um, and so what we are today is really a direct reflection of the wonderful staff uh, and faculty that, that we have there. And it's been three and a half years of hard, hard work trying to find teachers because we have had and we've lost um, wonderful faculty, but they weren't ready to do it as differently as what we do it. And, and I I take very little credit for where or what that school is other than being able to find like-minded individuals that said, all right, enough's enough. We've been trying this for a long time. Let's try to do something differently. Uh, and so when kids come in, it's um, a matter of looking at them and saying, where we're going to get to is wherever you're going to get to. 
it's not us. We don't own your success and we don't own your failure. And so if you want to do something different, let's do it different. And, and we're going to go about doing things differently with you in class. So, Craig, I'm, I've just been uh, out of school for the last year or most of the last year. I'm not sure I want to come to school, but I've now come to live at Maryville or I've been transferred there through my local school district. I'm wary. I say this will just be one more of those schools that that I fail in. They don't really want me. Nobody cares. And what's my experience on that first day of school? Um, I think a little bit of shock. The, the guys that come in, uh, we are a male-only school for a very purposeful reason. Um, and so a lot of times it takes time for students coming in to get over the fact that there isn't girls there. Uh, we also have uniforms and so it takes a little time but once they get past that um, I think their first experience and we've heard a number of kids say this and it's usually about a week into it I hear them say um, I didn't know you're supposed to laugh in school I didn't know you were supposed to have fun in school and so each one of the classes is um, specifically designed for a particular age group of kids and so we try to is when we get into the whole idea and like you said of kids being out of school credits make it a little difficult a ninth grader just because they're 16 doesn't mean they're a ninth grader they need to have the credits and so we try to match kids up age-wise we go from 12 to the day before you turn 22 years old a student could be in there and then within the program we have three different units so depending on cognitive function ranges disability types we match them up with a particular uh, classroom so we've got three different junior high classrooms um, there's three different sort of that middle 10th 11th 9th little blending of both and then we have <clears throat> more of your senior year where depending on the level of the kid they're working really hard on where are you going to go what are you going to do job skills uh, life skills whether or not it's career or college readiness um, just really depends on the particular ability level of those those guys and then we, we try to cater around um, the, the students to where they're going to go. Now do we, in gen school, do we teach traditional, so-called traditional subjects like math and yes. reading and just so our viewers know? Yeah. Yes, we do all the traditional stuff. Um, we are fully ISBE accredited and certified. ISBE? Illinois State Board of Education, I apologize. Um, the credits or the courses that we teach they may have different names than in other public school districts but that's where our counselors and folks do the articulation so that whatever the name is in your district will get that matched up so you get credit um, and the students that are at the gen school their actual diplomas will not say the gen school it will say whatever the home high school is uh, for where that student lives and so we work with anywhere between 20 and 25 different school districts at any at any given time uh, and so our our faculty does a wonderful job of trying to articulate all the hundreds and hundreds of different courses into into streamlining and making sure nobody's gonna no student will lose out if you do the work we promise you will find a credit or we will get that aligned to it and how big are the classes uh, the classes range anywhere between six to eight students um, and depending on the the age, the age range and the ability level, um, there's anywhere between uh, sometimes a two to one ratio, and those are students with cognitive impairments, traumatic brain injury, autism spectrum disorders, anywhere from, a, that's a two to one to a three to one ratio to our other students who are, um, we'll say behaviorally challenged, or some of them are some, struggle with some depression and, and different things, those classrooms are right around a four to one ratio. I'm going to ask some more questions, but first let's uh, show an overhead. We want to remind our viewers that we are here through the courtesy of the CAN TV Hotline 21 and that this is a live call-in show. So we welcome viewers calling in if you have questions or comments about education in general or the Gen School that Craig is speaking about. And we do want to talk a little bit this evening as well about how parents seek out some resources for their children. So I, I leave this uh, overhead here for you for just another few seconds, and we'll come back to it again. So, Craig, I uh, want to let our parents know who might be watching this show tonight, how is it that a young person uh, comes to the Gen School or some other alternative school uh, instead of what would otherwise be the uh, geographically closest school? 
our students um, come to us by virtue of going through the IEP, the Individualized Education Plan. That's how students are identified eligible for special education services. They initially, they will likely begin with services being provided in their home school or maybe in a self-contained classroom inside of that regular building. Um, sometimes they, if the school district has a public alternative school, they may go to that school. Um, but when all else fails, then they sit down and parents and teachers and school folks, they have a discussion and then an alternative setting is identified. If the alternative setting is identified, that's when therapeutic day schools um, become a part of the mix. And then it's a process of what type of school, there's lots of schools like us out there, but everybody has their specialty and everybody sort of has their niche and so then it becomes a process um, and it's very much a collaborative process all the parties have to agree so parents have to agree school has to agree uh, students can sometimes be strongly encouraged to agree one way or another but the bottom line is the IEP team has to come to a consensus it's not one party can't force it on the other so parents cannot unilaterally go and say I want my kid to go to this school and enroll them and expect the school district to pay. On the same token a school district cannot just put a kid in a school and say mom and dad we are not concerned about what your opinion is. Uh, and so it's a it's part of that IEP process um, and generally what will happen is if an alternative setting is identified the school district will say here's three schools that we recommend but that doesn't mean that has to be the only three schools that are looked at parents have the ability to say well we've heard about this one what about this one and it becomes kind of a talking process of why or why this one versus that one at, because at the end of the day it's what's best for this student what's the best place to get that kid the service that they need do you encourage parents to go and look at the proposed schools before they make their decision? 100%, yes. Um, and the, it, you should be strongly encouraged by your school district, and I've not worked with one yet that hasn't said uh, a parent and a student tour visit is common practice. But what I strongly encourage outside of is if you're not blown away with any one of the options that you're given. They're blown away positively. Yes. <laughs> Well, or negatively, don't assume, one, don't indict the whole group over a bad experience, but also, um, if you see something that's good, keep looking just to make sure, uh, because once you're there, uh, you, you can't just go back to the drawing board in six weeks, um, because it's a process, and two, the, it's, it's bad for the student. The student is never going to be anywhere long enough to really figure out what's going on. We have a learning curve with our kids. We don't, there's a honeymoon phase, they're great for a couple weeks, and then the real what we're working with and then we begin making progress from there and so you can't you can't take that four to six weeks and say all right this one's no good or that one's good now Craig I know that you're very supportive of interactive learning for the children and one way that you do this is to sponsor field trips for the children would you speak a little about what Gen School offers and our parents can be listening and thinking about opportunities that may be at the schools where their children are enrolled what we do is um, we use what's um, sometimes called a experiential or a, a problem-based learning curriculum and pedagogy, meaning our students do traditional like we would have done in school where we've got to do the research and we've got to learn the foundational stuff, the nuts and bolts of what we're talking about um, to be able to do something. But from there, we then begin uh, working on what's referred to now as 21st century skills. And some parents and folks, if you've read the newspapers, you've heard all about this stuff. But really what it boils down to is um, creativity and collaboration, communication, and <coughs> critical thinking. And so those are fundamental tenets of what we do when we teach. And so the kids are working cooperatively on projects and project-based assignments the kind of culmination with that and sometimes it happens a little before the end product they have to go out and see it so whether that means going to a museum or using the multitude of resources in the Chicagoland area um, they get out and do it I, last year I can't list all the places but last year as a school I want to say we were right about 150 different field trips and that's is you know as little as going to a business down the street for career centered hey, this is what it really means to work at a factory level job. So if you don't think you want to work on an assembly line after seeing this firsthand, 
we might want to get more involved in this over here. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same token, if that works for you, good for you. Then it was a positive field trip. Um, but, you know, to the other end of the spectrum of the arts and science museums and as many different things as we can creatively get the kids exposed to. Now, the children also have a garden, don't they? Yes, yes, we are fortunate. Um, uh, over the last uh, two and a half years, uh, we have, I think we are up to now, 25 12 by 12 raised garden beds. Uh, the University of Illinois Extension Program, the Master Gardener Program, works with us. They're out there one day a week. Each one of the classrooms um, has a garden. It's it's all it's as organic as we can possibly get. And um, we've run into a couple issues with a diff we're done doing uh, pumpkins because some issues that we run into with the vines. Um, but the kids are out there and maintaining it as much as they possibly can grow. We use in uh, the school lunch program, and so all the fruits, vegetables are at a salad bar. The kids have actually liked it so much, we now have a full-time salad bar all the time. Um, and if we don't have fresh spinach, they get upset with, you know, other lettuce because they like the stuff from the garden. And some of our other uh, classes, um, the kind, of, some of the lower functioning life skills training run a. Um, farm stand where you come and buy your tomatoes from in the summertime so as much as we can grow we try to give back and we've just recently added uh, eight fruit trees so in a couple of years we're hoping we'll we'll see some stuff from there too well in a moment i'm going to ask you about the vocational programs greg but first i want to give our viewers an opportunity on one more time to see the call-in number we are uh, on the air tonight because of the courtesy of can tv's hotline 21 this is a interactive live call-in show, and this is the telephone number if you would like to call with your comments or questions. Now, Craig, I'm going to ask you to tell us about the vocational program at Gen School. The vocational program is called the INVEST program, which stands for Integrated Vocational and Educational Skills Training. A lot easier just to say INVEST. Uh, the INVEST program is um, in addition to our regular academic day, so from 1.30 to 3.45 uh, daily, students can then earn an additional credit per semester. And what that in involves is two days a week, they are in career-centered um, classroom instruction, where we start with the presumption of nothing. Application, filling those out all the way through taped video interviews to having to go out and um, they're going to do full research on jobs and what education and so forth you go into and then the rest of the time they work in on-site work internships so they'll they we do all of our own custodial maintenance in uh, the school and the gymnasium and a couple other areas around the campus we have a recycling program in um, a, a number of different things so it's paid and the reason that it's paid is because it makes it a whole lot easier to mm -hmm. work with kids and make the connection between money and budget when you actually have real money but on the flip side um, it costs them so when they don't have their uniform shirt for school it's either you can go home or guess what we've got them for sale and we know you work and we know you have money and that's how the real life works of if you're not prepared you need to pay for it and so um, it's a way for us to make this experience real versus you know fake money monopoly it just doesn't it mm. doesn't bring it home but when it's when it's green like the rest of the money and it costs them um, they begin to remember stuff um, and, and come prepared for uh, school and we want our children to be prepared because when they finish at gen school they're moving out into the work world if they've got the skills to to obtain a job and hold on to a job so this is a very important lesson for them. Uh, would you like to say a bit about the part of the vocational program that deals with our vending machines? Yes, that's, uh, that's another chance that's for them to... It's a popular job, I know. Yeah, yes, it is, because they get to handle all the money. But they are in, they are in charge of um, creating the inventory, counting the money, purchasing. The goal is to make money. All the money that they make will go back to uh, the students for more or less the fun field trip not the direct learning field trip so the the fun one that they get to choose where they want to go and what they want to do with it so it's uh, it's been a definite work in progress and um, I have to thank the faculty because this was a giant an enormous job for them to take on and trying to coordinate all of this and figuring out um, you know you'd never believe how many people have opinions on what should be in a vending machine until you ask what should be in the vending machine and so they've done a great job of coordinating all of that and, and trying to 
provide the best opportunity for those students they can. Now, can some of the students progress from the these jobs that you described that are on the campus and displays to positions in outside entities? Yes, that's the ultimate goal. That's the you've made it there, and our job coaches are able to follow them then to there. So our 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 goal for all of those students is to get the experience on site so that they actually now have work references that they can list. They will have reference letters that their job coaches will be able to provide them. Um, and, and the ultimate goal is to have them working in their community. So at 1.30 or maybe earlier, depending on um, their, where they're at academic credits, they might have an early work release where they go to work and we'll mm -hmm. follow up and they're still able to earn some of those remaining credits um, to get them caught up. And it, it, along with that, we also do um, what's called adventure ed. So we do high ropes course stuff, low ropes course. Kids are canoeing, kayaking, fishing, hiking, um, you name it, it's it's going on. And that's uh, provided as an alternative and a way for students. A number, a lot of times, a number of our kids are very behind in PE. It's one of the easiest classes to skip. And so... Um, it doesn't matter if you did everything else. If you don't have your PE credits, you're not going to graduate. And so we try to provide them alternative ways to get the PE in, in areas that we hope they could do this when they leave school. You can still go fishing. You can take your family someday hiking or camping. Um, and, and a lot of what we do is, is team-centered, so it's cooperative. They have to work with people, and they have to work with each other uh, while they're doing those activities. So it kind of wraps the whole gen philosophy back into it, but we have fun while we're doing it. And how do the children do in the gen school? Can you give us a couple ideas of successes or challenges? I think for the most part they, they, do, they do very well. I mean, we have our days. Every, every kid has their day, but it's all, it's a matter of, um, and one of the teachers taught me a while ago, it's about failing forward. And so... It's a matter of you're going to make mistakes, but can you identify what they were, what you're going to do about it, and make sure you don't make the same one twice. And I think for the most part, uh, a number of our students do that. We also have had students, and I'll be the first one to say it, and it happens everywhere. Some of them don't make it. Whether that's us, them, there was just a choice that it just wasn't going to work. But for the most part, um, I would say the vast majority of our students um, walk away smarter, maybe not on a test score, but smarter in the ability that they know how to think. They know where to go. They know how to ask for help. They know where to go to find help. And if you know those things, you'll be all right. Uh, you know, and I think we achieve our main goal, which is um, if these students can leave and, and achieve being a tax payer versus a tax recipient, I don't care whether it's college or whatever they're doing, then, then we've gotten there. Everybody's giving back and, and nobody's taking from the system. And it, of our children who attend Gen School, would you mention the numbers again? We numbers, have a small school. Yes. How large is our school? 61 is our capacity. Um, and so depending on the classrooms, and right now it's springtime, so we're looking for and waiting for more referrals. We have kids graduating, so we're anywhere between 55 and 60. Uh, and what class? Uh, we have high school? We have high school. We are 12 through 21 and a half, so that's grades 6 through 12 plus. And so this is a formative time in the children's years. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Yeah, we're and we're happy to get the junior high rooms going to try to catch some of them earlier. So we don't want we don't want them to graduate with us. Our goal is to get them in, get things back in order and get them back to where they belong. But if they end up graduating with us, good. And we do have quite a number of graduations. Yes. I know, Craig at yes. the school. So I want to thank Dr. Craig Mackey for sharing with us this evening. Uh, how the Gen School tries to meet the educational needs of our children in ways that helps them understand that they can succeed and helps them succeed. Uh, we all know that education is a gift uh, and uh, a challenge, but a gift that we can give our children that no one can take away from them. So on behalf of Maryville Academy, we're pleased that you joined us tonight. We hope that you found this helpful in the education of your children. Good evening.